What's up guys and welcome back to the last episode of this Mercedes minibus campervan conversion. So on the channel I've recently been updating a lot of videos on the little Ford Connect that I've been converting out there. But I have been in the minibus finishing off the small little final finishing touches, the small little jobs that weren't really video worthy. Just to get it to the stage where I now consider this conversion fully complete. And now we're at that stage I figured I'd just do a quick final walk around roundup video of the conversion showing everything that's gone into it as well as a walk around the exterior as well because i am going to be advertising this vehicle up for sale quite soon as well so this video will also act as a little tour around the vehicle just in case there's any prospective buyers who aren't local who want to try and get a good viewing of the vehicle as it stands at the moment so conversion wise it was originally a 16 seat minibus it's been stripped right down to its very bare chassis and built back up to the camper van that you see today including all new flooring insulation, new plywood flooring and the outdoor safety flooring down there as well up the front I took out the original driver's seat and I fitted a passenger seat as well and these are BMW E46 leather electric seats even the headrests are electric on them, they're quite nice seats these ones and other than a reversing camera on the front there I haven't really done anything else at the front of the vehicle all the conversion works happened behind the the two front seats really so as you can see i've also fitted in a double minibus seat and these seats do have the seat belts in as well so this vehicle can now legally carry four people with seat belts no problems at all unlike the previous conversion that i did where i just had the two front seats so legally last time that could only carry two passengers this time this can double up and carry four so you can take away any kids or friends or anything like that as well. To the side of the minibus seats we have a sofa bed that's more than suitable for short adults or kids as well. It measures 150 centimetres long or 5 foot long by 60 wide as it is and with that cushion and the bottom section that flips up that cushion then lays on top and that extends the width out to 3 foot wide or 90 centimetres wide as well. So it's a really good sized short bed, I say it's quite wide, it's quite long as well so you'd definitely be able to fit a couple of kids on there or a couple of small adults as well, not a problem at all. Underneath there we have the outlet for the diesel heater and the diesel heater is mounted underneath the vehicle. The bus had an original heater mounted under there, that wasn't worked anymore so I've replaced that but with it being mounted underneath the vehicle it cuts out a lot of the heater noise that you would normally get generated when the heat is actually kicking in and producing all the heat so with it being mounted underneath the vehicle that cuts out a lot of that noise and now all you've got is nice hot air coming out of the diesel heater now all of the living area has been fully cladded in timber cladding throughout both the living area and the rear bedroom area as well the living area has all been painted in just plain white and that means that if anybody did come along they wanted the vehicle but they wanted to jazz up the paint walls and things like that just grab a paint can paint brush and you can change it to any color that you want but i like the white it's nice and bright it gives a nice open airy feel inside the conversion as well so that's why i went for the nice plain white now there's overhead storage locker cupboards throughout on both the passenger and driver side and in the rear where the rear bed is as well so you've got two doors on this side with another four overhead on that side on the passenger side as well so there's no shortage of storage in this conversion because you've got six overhead lockers in here another two at the back and then under the sofa bed has storage as well as under the rear bed as well now as we move into the kitchen area we have a brand new real wood worktop and the vast majority of all the items that have gone into this conversion are all brand new as well so a couple of used items, everything else is brand spanking new, including everything that's in this kitchen build. So we have a real wood worktop that's been treated with some Danish teak oil as well. We have a brand new Thetford Top Lines 9 series 4 burner gas hob, as well as a Thetford duplex oven and grill. And as you can see, it's all brand new. It hasn't even had any food splatterings or anything like that on it. All nice and shiny. Then we've got a 12 volt retro Swan under counter fridge and this is a full height fridge it's not one of your smaller camper van fridges this is a standard full height fridge but it runs off 12 volt compressor technology rather than the gas or electric things like that and inside that it's got a small little freezer compartment as well 
and as you can see even the fridge has all of these still blue protective tapes and things like that on it as well it's only been fired up to test it to make sure that it works then it's been turned back off again same with everything else in the conversion really it's all just been fired up just to make sure that everything works and it's all been turned off again now there is some under counter storage here as well and these have both pop out the uh, locks with soft close hinges on them as well so you're not going to get any doors slamming or anything like that and under the sink there's also all the quick access for all of the gas tap manifolds so you've got easy access to turn all the gas on and off whenever you need it to as well as I say just pop the door shut and it'll slowly close away pop the button lock in and that means that the lock, the doors now then can't come open as well now above the sink we do have a lot of uh, meters and switches as well we have a meter there for the underslung 25 litre gas tank and that has a digital gas sender meter reader on it so I'll flip this little switch and this readout gives a readout of how much gas is left in the underslung gas tank and I have taken this vehicle out put some gas in it just so I could test all of the gas appliances and as you can see there the gas tank is still two thirds full because I did put quite a lot of gas in it again just to be sure that everything was working all the gas was pressure tested things like that next to that we have the water meter which gives a water indication level of both the fresh and the waste the waste only gives an indication when it's full or getting close to full whereas the fresh one has four indicator levels of minimal empty low medium and full so you can always have a good rough idea of how much water is left in both the fresh tank and how much space is left in the waste beneath that we've just got a couple of basic switches one for the 12 volt water pump one for the swan fridge down there as well and the third one is for the 24 inch 12 volt logic tv at the back now before we get to the back we have the bathroom area this has a thetford c200 swivel toilet in it with an official Thetford C200 shower tray as well and it has a thermostatic mixer shower connected up as well and the thermostatic mixer shower gets all of the hot water as well as the sink from the Truma hot water heater which is located under that section of the rear sofa bed there's the controls for the Truma boiler for both the gas and the electric so this has a proper motorhome water heater in it rather than one of the cheap combi boilers that some people are putting in the conversions that aren't rated for motorhome use I said the Truma ones that's what these are built for so that's why I've gone for a brand new 10 litre electric and gas hot water heater now at the rear we've got a full size small double bed that's been turned into a u-shaped sofa bed it's actually a little bit longer than a full sized small double bed because the full width of this bed here is 202 centimeters whereas I think a small double bed is around about 190 centimeters so it's full extra length but it's also full width as well this has all had brand new cushions cut down to shape and they've all been upholstered with brand new upholstery as well same with the front cushions as well again brand new foam mattress cut down to shape and fully upholstered with new upholstery so under that side we have the sure flow water pump and the Fiamma water accumulator and the Truma water heater I'll just quickly move a couple of the cushions and just show you so under there there's the Truma 10 litre water heater with the exhaust cowl going out of the exterior of the vehicle as well as the sure flow water pump and the Fiamma water accumulator which just makes sure that there's no water pulsing when the water is being put on demand through the taps or the shower put the cushions back and we'll take the other side up because under this side is where all of the electrics are housed so we have 265 amp hour AGM batteries that gives 330 amp hours of power usage we also have a Victron Atlas Combi inverter and battery charger and that's an 1100 watt inverter and a 40 amp hour battery charger so that's a really really good unit as well we also have a Victron Smart Solar solar controller and that connects up to Bluetooth on your phone and that gives full readouts showing how much power has been generated by the solar panels on the roof as well as showing a full history of power generation things like that 
and we also have a split charge relay just to make sure that both the starter battery and the leisure batteries are always topped up. So as you can see, all the electrics are nicely housed under that little sofa bed section there. And obviously we have that little 12 volt TV that goes on the swivel arm so that can bend all the way around into the other side as well. Now we have PVC cladding on the ceiling throughout with the LED down lighters. And the LED down lights all have their own individual touch panels so they can all be brightened up and dimmed right down. And we have a touch panel for the living area, a touch panel for the lights in the bathroom and one final touch panel for the bedroom area as well. Now this vehicle does have permanent ventilation above it as well because it has two whirly vents on the roof that are constantly spinning when there's a little bit of wind. And you can open and close these vents in case you're away in the winter and you don't want any cold or winter air coming in. You just close the vents and that stops the air coming through. But hot summer days like this, you want it opened up and try and get some airflow going through the vehicle. So as you can see, the conversion work on the inside, it's taken a long time, but I think it's come out to quite a high standard. I'm quite happy with how it's all turned out. I say this has taken me nine to 10 months to get fully completed from stripping the vehicle all the way down to the bare chassis and building it up to as you see right now. I'll also take you on a quick tour of the outside because I have resprayed the vehicle recently as well. I've recently resprayed the Ford Connect in Raptor White and as I was doing that I've also sprayed this vehicle in exactly the same paint and this is white textured paint as you can see here it's quite bobbly but this is like a protective rubberized paint that's why I've used this on both the vehicle and the Ford as well because this will give all the fiberglass panels lots of protection for plenty of years to come as well it's the good thing about these vehicles all of the side panels are fully fiberglass the only metal panel on the entire vehicle is the bonnet everything else is all fiberglass even all the wings the roof all the side panels so you're never going to get any of the usual sprinter rusty side panel problems or anything like that these are all just fiberglass fiberglass never rots so you've got no problems at all I also like how the resprays came out it's not patchy or stripey or anything it's gone out on a nice clean even coating and that's what you want really now on the exterior we have the access panel for the diesel heater down there so if the diesel heater needed any maintenance that panel pops off and that gives full access for that we also have access for the Thetford cassette toilet and that's for the exhaust cowl for the Truma 10 litre water heater as well as, as well as some water inlets and outlets down there to get fresh water into the waste uh, into the fresh tank and an outlet for the waste tank as well on the rear we have a reversing camera just so you can see where you're reversing out because obviously it is a big vehicle so you do want to see where you're reversing and on the passenger side we have the 240 volt hookup we have the flush mounted gas lpg fill point and that's an access panel to get into the gas pad uh, the underslung gas tank as well and then on the roof you might just be able to see up there as well there's the two 270 watt solar panels giving 540 watts of solar panel charging so there we go guys that is a quick walk down and round up of this mercedes minibus camper van conversion i said nine to ten months worth of work in the making and this is now the final finished outcome so let me know what you think of the conversion in the comments below. If you like the conversion, give the video a good old thumbs up as well. That's a good way for me to gauge how well you think I've done on this conversion. Going through from turning it into a min from a minibus into the conversion that you see today. Now I say I am going to be putting this vehicle up for sale soon as well. So when this vehicle is newly released, this vehicle is probably going to be up for sale at the same time. So in the off chance that you might actually be interested as well, all of my contact details are going to be in the description below the video. There'll be links going out to my Facebook page, my website, things like that. So in the off chance that you might actually be interested in buying this vehicle, check the video description below for the links going out to my website, Facebook page, or the usual contact info. But yep, that'll do it guys. As I say, a long, long time, a lot of time in the making, a lot of effort and money going into it as well. But this is now the final finished outcome and this is going to be the last video of this series unless I do one final time lapse of the entire build. 
So the future videos for the channel, I'm still working on the Ford Connect out there. There's still going to be a few videos of that one to come. I'm around about halfway through that conversion. So there's still going to be a good few videos of that one. And then after that one's finished, who knows, I might take a break. I might get another van, we'll see. But as I say, I thought I'd do a quick roundup video of this, just in case there's any prospective buyers out there who wanted to have a look at it. As well as people that have followed along with the full conversion who wanted to see a final roundup as well. So, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the conversion as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think and give the video a good old thumbs up. And hopefully I'll see you next week as we continue with the Ford Connect camper van conversion as well. Thanks for watching. Cheers.